Guys, welcome back. Okay, so in my last episode, I took you through how to grind up some blades. Tonight, I'm gonna to show you how to finish those blades using surface conditioning belts. These are Scotch-Brite belts. These are awesome belts to use, especially if you don't love hand sanding. And believe me, I know a lot of knife makers out there despise hand sanding. I don't love it, but I do enjoy the process. That's why a lot of my knives do get sanded. But tonight, I'm gonna to use the surface conditioning belts, Scotch-Brite. Let's see, we've got the coarse, the medium, and the fine. I'm gonna run you through the process of how I use these belts, how I obtain good grind lines with these belts, and a couple tips and tricks throughout the video. This is gonna be a quick one, guys, so stick around. Very similar to the last video, since I have a whole stack of these blades right here, I'm going to put on my coarse grit belt and I will go through each blade one at a time and as they start to get warm, I'll set it off to the side and I'll grab a new one and I'll keep working it while I have that belt on there. That's the luxury that I have because I have a whole stack of these. I don't have to continually change the belt to finish each knife one at a time. Since I am doing a batch, I can kind of move through until they're all done on the course, then I can move to the medium, then I can move to the fine. If you're just doing one knife, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have your fresh bucket of water here and you're going to want to continually dip your knife in that water to keep it cool. We've already heat treated these, so we've got to make dang sure that you don't overheat this blade. Um, especially now that we've got the edge geometry thinned out near the edge, this edge can overheat super quickly. So you definitely need to watch the heat that you're building up on this edge. Don't wear gloves. And uh, if, if, like I said, if you're just doing one, keep it a bucket of water right there and that'll keep you good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll get this uh, coarse belt put on. These come in different colors. This brand, I happen to know the red is the coarse, the uh, yellow is the medium, and the green is the fine. So we're gonna run the coarse belt. I don't think that these are directional belts. At least they don't have arrows on them so you can run them either way. Now I will tell you, these belts throw a ton of stuff off of them when you're grinding. So you're definitely, definitely going to want to wear your PPE, your glasses, your dust protector, because it throws stuff all over you. I in fact like to wear a hooded sweatshirt pulled up over, all wrapped up underneath my respirator, and that keeps my whole head and hair and everything nice and clean. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to focus right here in this plunge line area. We're going to take that belt, we're going to run it right up into this area, and we're going to work the edge of the belt right into this plunge. We can even roll the belt off the side just a little bit off the side of the platen so that it kind of rolls into that plunge. I personally like nice crisp tight plunges. I don't do the big sweeping plunges most of the time. I can do those but I like the plunges that come right up to the top and then crisping out. Now this top line right here, this is gonna push up just slightly and it's gonna wash out slightly. That's okay because we'll come back and clean up these flats and it'll establish a new line when we're done. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I do grind these with the edge up still, and I just take precaution as I'm going through. As this grinds, I just take precaution and I feel it, and I try not to ever tip the knife into it, the, the belt like so, because if you do tip the knife in there, since this is starting to thin out, this could catch like that. It could be easier to do it like this, but the problem that I find grinding the knife like this with these belts is it tends to round this over. If you're gonna round the spine of the knife over and have a curved top, that'd be just fine. But I don't plan on doing that and I like to keep this nice and crisp, so I do grind them with the cutting edge up.
here's where we're at. We took three passes on each one of these with the course. I'm going to show you the difference from each side. Let's see, where's a good angle so you can see. Okay, there's, that's the course belt right there. Now I'll show you the other side. Okay, you can see the deep scratches. I'm trying to figure out what's the best light here. There we go. All right, there we go. You can see the difference between, see how uniform those scratch patterns are with that coarse belt on there. And then here's just the 120 grit right off the sander. So do you see how the 120 grit kind of leaves these various little flat facets on the, on the flat surface? This is flat. If I go to hand sand it, all these will disappear. But if I go in with that surface conditioning belt, it smooths everything together. And that's the beauty of the surface conditioning belt. It conditions the surface. These are all ready to move up to the next grit. I'll show you. So this is the 120 side. Right there, you can see the scratch patterns, really pronounced. And then I flip it over, and this is the coarse scotch bright. And you'll see, as I move to the medium and the fine, these the scratch pattern will be refined for sure. And I'll continue to work this plunge line. I'm not worried about these flats right now. I'll worry about that later. I'm just doing this right here. Same thing with this one. I'm not worried about this flat right here. I'll come back and clean this up and it'll it'll give me a nice defined line right there. Not a big deal. If you want a line crisp like this, I do not suggest using surface conditioning belts. Keeping a really crisp line with the surface conditioning belt is going to be extremely difficult. I found the best way to keep a, a semi-crisp line is to go ahead and grind your bevels with those conditioning belts first and then come back and clean this flat from here to here up and what that'll do is it'll cut a new crisp line but you run the risk of having this line kind of waver slightly doing it this way because you don't have the control of creating this line by grinding your bevels just something to take note of now on this one I won't go for a super crisp line like this, that's all right. You'll still see the line, but it just won't be extremely crisp like that. I'll have a scratch pattern going this way, and I'll have a scratch pattern going this way. All the rest of these, I've taken my bevels all the way up to this inside corner right here, and then they break, they break the spine of the knife out here, so I have a nice, tight inside corner right there at the top of my bevels. But overall, I really like how those surface conditioning belts work. Uh, they definitely cut down on the amount of time you spend on a knife, but it is a very particular finish. So that's the course. Let's go ahead and move into the medium. Medium course belt next. Okay, so this is the medium course belt here. And I've taken all of these up to a medium course belt. Let's see if I can't get it to, actually I think it'll look better if I put my hand behind it here. Let's get this to focus in here. 
There we go. These are medium grit scratches on the surface conditioning belt. And that looks pretty awesome right there. They're nice and uniform, but they're still just a little deep for me. So I am going to take these to the fine grit. Each one of these is pretty good. Um, on the fine grit, I'm going to go ahead and do this flat on the surface conditioning belt with the scratches going this way first. And then I'm going to come in and do these right here. And I think that's going to give me this crisp line right here, or at least clean this uh, upper area up a little bit here and clean these flats up. So we're going to give that a whirl. I'm going to, I've got seven different blades here so we could try a couple different things. I'm going to try to grind these first on the fine and then do these and we'll see how that works out and then we'll try to gr finish grind these with the fine and then do this second and see which one comes out better. So I actually changed it up and what I did first is I did all of the flats first because it just seemed to go really well that way. You, what you saw me do is grind the flats, this area here and the little tiny piece of sliver of material up here and I ground those smooth with that fine belt right there. Now you'll see some scratch marks going this way across the bevel because you know, that belt has some give to it. So as it was grinding that flat, you know, it might've come down and some of the Scotch-Brite pieces touched this bevel. But now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna grind this bevel up to here. And now that this is a nice even sheen across, now I can grind this bevel up and I should be able to get this sweeping line right up there. We'll see. up on the fine grit I will tell you I think they look awesome but my motto is when you think you're done pack it up call tonight come back out the next day and check it out I'm pretty sure I'm, these are gonna need some additional work maybe refine the scratch patterns just a little bit but hey here's the deal if you guys don't like hand sanding this is a really neat way to go you can get some awesome uniform scratch patterns 
It's almost like putting a satin finish. It's a little rougher than a satin finish, even with the fine. But look at that. That's going to be just fine for these knives. Okay, guys, real quick, like, here's my grading scale. So I just grab my knife like this, and I look at it, and I just start uh, putting little marks everywhere. I move the light around on the knife, and uh, I find my scratches. And wherever they are, I just mark them up. And the big one, the deep ones, I like circle, and the, the light ones, I just put a little mark on. And then when I go over there, I can not miss them, you know. This one down here, I'm not worried about this one because it's going to be beneath the guard. So it doesn't really bother me. Um, but yeah, I just kind of, you know, work through these. So like here, here, oh, there, mm, there, and there, maybe put there. Yeah, yep, yep, there we go. Oh, that's kind of what I think about that. <laughs> you know, when I look at these, it kind of reminds me of being back in grade school, flunking a spelling test, you know, getting it back from your teacher. That's kind of how I felt, you know, when I looked at this whole pile of these, I was almost insulted. But the truth is, you know, that's why I come back the next day. You know, you feel like you're done, and then boom, you're not. those come out I also swept this out on a couple of these on purpose just to try it these scratch patterns came out really nice for not hand sanding I am super pleased with this definitely happy definitely happy let's grab another one do, 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 do. let's get this one another good one they all came out perfect. I mean, I really like it. It is really hard where this plunge comes over using these belts to prevent any scratches to happen up here. The belts have some uh, little debris that hang off of them. You know, they're real uh, squishy belts, so they you can't get a crisp line with them. I suppose probably the best thing for me to have done if I wanted this line super crisp would have been to grind this with the surface conditioning belts and then put some paper on a surface plate and work the knife like this back and forth to get this back. But I promised there would be no hand sanding and that would be considered hand sanding. So this is, I think, just about as good as you can get it with zero hand sanding. And that's a good finish, guys. That's actually a really good finish. You know, I, I've got the... Uh, I've got the camera turned to ISO 320 so that you can actually see this, but this is hard to see without the camera turned all the way like this. So, you know, I'm trying to give you the best accurate description of how that's going to look when you come off the grinder. There you go. That's a pretty good one. These right here are actually just wipes from my towel. That's not, that's, those aren't scratches. Hey guys, if you found some good value in this video, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up and tell me what you think about it in the comments. All those things definitely help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And hey, I want a lot more people to be able to see my videos and, you know, maybe make some knives and send me some pictures. I want to see pictures of the stuff that you guys are making out there. I love it. That just makes my day when you guys make contact with me and talk to me and send me pictures of the stuff that you guys are making because that's why I do this. I do this because I really want to get you guys involved. If you notice, every person that asks me a question, I definitely give you a response down below. So don't hesitate. If you guys have questions, I'll take care of you down there in the comments.